Surgeons do the incredible. They help save lives. And so can you by donating at CSL Plasma. Your CSL Plasma donation can help create 24 critical life-saving medicines that may give the cashier from your local deli the chance to see your daughter's championship game or give your barber the chance to celebrate his golden anniversary. Do the amazing. Help save lives. Donate today at your local CSL Plasma Center and receive up to $1,000 your first month. Varies by location and is subject to change. Jesse, uh, let's uh, start with what we have tonight. Gibbs has been playing very well. Anderson County has been playing even better. There's not a game this year that Anderson County has not scored 35 points in. How about that? Yeah, I mean, that's what they're known for with uh, Coach Gillum up there is, is offense, offense, offense. But really, last week, you look back to that game against Carter, and they had it going in all facets of the game. They were up 49 and nothing at halftime. And just really, I thought, bounced back from a subpar effort that they had against Elizabethan the week before. And uh, so, yeah, they got it going again. And Anderson County hasn't lost a region game since, I think, 2016. So if they win this game tonight against Gibbs, which is a big region game, they go ahead and keep that trend going. But they also pretty much lock up the number one seed out of region uh, 2-4A, I believe, in for the 4A playoffs. So there's a lot on the line for Anderson County tonight. I don't expect them to come out flat whatsoever. whatsoever. And for Gibbs, you know, they, as they told us on five-star preps, I mean, they have nothing to lose. I mean, they're coming into this game, I'm not going to say a tremendous underdog, but an underdog. And uh, they, they know they can really position themselves well for the 4A playoffs if they pull off an upset. So this says a lot to – Lot on the line tonight. Talking with Jesse Smithy from Five Star Preps. All right, uh, Jordan Potts back for Powell, playing really well. Campbell County and Powell, what are we expecting in that one? Yeah, it just, um, yeah, as you mentioned, Jordan Potts playing extremely well. They've won their last five games for at Powell, and I think some other guys have stepped up too, and that's only made them a stronger football team as he's gotten more comfortable playing hurt. Campbell County, you look at them, they want to just a crazy game on rivalry Thursday last week in overtime and so they're feeling good and uh, they haven't beaten Powell in four or five years it's going to take a, another big effort from their offense they I think come close to, to beating Powell Powell I think has has the, the motivation in this game to get that number one seed go into their bye week next week heal up come back play Catholic at North City, and then go into the 5A playoffs, like I've said before, exactly where they were last year, right there atop the region standings, right there with the number one seed next to its name, and uh, ready to make another deep postseason run. So it's, um, I think this is Powell's, Powell's game, but Campbell County definitely has some guys that can make this game interesting. Justin Smithy, 5starpreps.com, our guest here on the Eric Gain Show. Um Ooh. I, I said last week in the run-up to that Campbell County uh, game that I didn't think anything could top West and Alcoa from the week before, and then it was topped with the overtime game last week. Uh, another team we saw earlier in the season on Rivalry Thursday was Maryville. So they're in a new position right now with a two in the loss column. Uh, they lost their winning streak to Alcoa, also lost the long region winning streak, where is Maryville right now? Is it gut check time? Where Where is that program right now uh, headed into the last few weeks of the regular season? Yeah, I mean, they have a, a bye this week, and so they're going to have to stew over that loss to Cleveland that nobody saw coming. Look, look we, we saw Maryville in the preseason, and so there were some red flags there that we tried to subtly drop hints about on radio reports or things that we're writing, but nobody had Cleveland maybe pulling the upset on – Maryville, it's not, it's not a great Cleveland team, but Maryville scored late in that game. It looked like they were, they were going to kind of escape uh, on the road with maybe a three-point victory and um, just a, a late penalty on them gave Cleveland a chance to go ahead and punch it in and win the game, and Cleveland did that. So you got to tip your cap to Cleveland. But Maryville still has everything in front of them. They, they're part of a four-way tie right now for the first place in, in their region. So if they come back from fall break, come back from their bye week, and, and I'm sure, like I said, they're going to be stewing mad over it. Uh, just go ahead and finish off the rest of the of the season. They do have a difficult game with West High School 
Um, so this, there's a possibility that Maryville can have three losses uh, going into the postseason. We're just not used to seeing that, but um, there's still a Maryville team that could make a deep run to say the semifinals where they'd have to play Oakland again for the millionth year in a row. But it's just it's abnormal seeing Maryville lose a region game. It's the first region loss since 2000 for them. A uh, streak of 144 region wins came to an end. It, it, uh, it's just um, diff- weird to see, but they still have everything in front of them. Jesse Smithy, five star preps. All right, I got I got an interesting one for you here. Catholic has been okay this year. They've won some close games. They're not a bad football team. Lipscomb Academy is the deal. Does Catholic have a yeah. chance in this game? No, I I don't think so. You look back to last year and Lipscomb came up to Knoxville, beat a, a really good Catholic team, forty four to nothing, and that was a Lipscomb team that was playing without two of its best players that night. They're even better now. Uh, they're 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 beating teams in state, out of state, just whatever they want the score to be. They're nationally ranked now. Uh, it just I don't know if Catholics in a position to to match what Trent Dilfer has going over over at Lipscomb. I know they still got to play the game. Like I said, nobody saw Cleveland beating Maryville, so crazy things can happen. All it takes is one kind of key injury to a quarterback or what have you to, to really level the playing field in a game. But um, just looking at it on paper, the tail of the tape, I mean, Catholics had a big disadvantage going into this game. An area team that has really impressed me, and I, I saw them week one, or week two, I believe, of the high school season, was Sevier County. It, they won 7 nothing over Halls last week. Six of seven opponents have scored 14 points or fewer that's a severe county program that's normally known for their offense, but it's the defense that's getting the job done now and has uh, the Smoky Bears at 6-1. and one. Yeah, it's, uh, they've definitely been one of the surprise teams in the area because of that, and they've made some changes at the quarterback position. They moved Mason Ellis, uh, kind of an athlete, into that quarterback role to try to kickstart and find something offensively. It, it hasn't happened completely yet. But Sevier County in a, in a very good position going into the last few weeks of the season, trying to get a, maybe a number two seed out of Region 25A behind West High School. Still some big games to be played. But, yeah, their defensive unit um, had a tough night against West. But other than that, um, who hasn't? <laughs> they've been lights out. But yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, they've been lights out. And so Garrett Hawkins is a linebacker that – Kind of captains that defensive unit. He's getting some FCS looks. Just a, a, a monster of a linebacker, and he's helping out on offense as well. So uh, definitely going to keep an eye on Sevier County these last few weeks and see again if they can lock up a two seat. Uh, mentioned, of course, Catholic and Lipscomb Academy, but two other games that you can hear on the air here on our Cumulus family of stations. Uh, Jefferson County, good team. Uh, record probably isn't as reflective of where they thought they would be at this point of the year. They're at Hardin Valley on News Talk 98.7. And then Halls and Carnes, that Halls defense against Deshaun Bishop, those should be two uh, pretty interesting matchups uh, tomorrow night. Yeah, I mean, you look at Halls' record and it does not look good at all, but then you look at a little closer at the the margins of defeat that they've had, and they really played a lot of teams close. And so uh, Halls, head coach Brent Hughes, kind of a defensive-minded guy. We'll see if he dials up to try to stop uh, Deshaun Bishop and for Jefferson County that you mentioned the the storyline going into that game is is Isaiah Hall healthy their junior quarterback who can throw it an absolute mile remember last year they had it going he got hurt out for the season and they really struggled uh, down the stretch and ended up bowing out early in the first round of the playoffs he got hurt last week we'll see what the magnitude of that that injury is they could probably win this game without him so i don't know if he'll play or not but that's that's the storyline with jefferson county is can isaiah hall get healthy finish off the season and see if they can win their first playoff game in what seems like forever jesse what else are you watching for uh this weekend and uh, where will five star preps live be uh tomorrow night yeah five star live will be at a really huge game out in oak ridge greenville and oak ridge and you're talking about two of the more Storied football programs in East Tennessee high school football. Only play, this will be only like the fifth meeting between them, and I think the only t- second, the second time that Greenville's played in Oak Ridge. So 
uh, that's going to be a fun game to watch. It's a non-region game, so not a lot riding on it, but nevertheless, just a marquee matchup between two programs. I do want to invite everybody to hop on to Five Star Preps YouTube. Check out the film that Sam Scott did on Tennessee School for the Deaf football. Uh, it's 10 minutes. Take 10 minutes of your time, and I promise you it's so worth it. Oftentimes, those kids out at TSD get overlooked because they're playing on a Saturday or maybe playing at a weird time on a Thursday or playing out of state against another school for the deaf. But it's such a unique experience to go out there and catch a football game and see how they do it. Uh, give those kids 10 minutes of your time. Watch that film. I promise you, you'll be a better person for it. We used to play, uh, when I was a Catholic, we played TSD every year. And as you mentioned, it was always on a Thursday night. It was always at their place because our field wasn't available on Thursdays back then. But a really cool, uh, it was a really cool thing every year. And uh, appreciate the memories of, of being able to play against them back in the day. Yeah, I did a story for the New Sentinel back in the the mid to late 2000s. Went out there and never seen the place, never talked to anybody out there. And there are speaking people there. And, and they just embrace you with open arms. They want to show you what TSD football is about. They want to tell their story. And uh, it's just, man, it's just a great place. I've always held a special place in my heart for TSD. And glad we could get out there and spotlight them once again. Jesse, always appreciate the time on Thursdays. I encourage people to check out 5starpreps.com. We will talk to you again next week. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Ross Matthews talks to celebrities, friends, and people with interesting stories to tell. Who's saying, hello, Ross, this week? Chelsea Handler. I'm not home enough to have a third dog. My housekeeper basically is their parent. I am not going to get another dog so that she has to take care of another dog until one of these dogs exits. It's a good move. And I have three rescue dogs and only two hands. And when you're one person, that's too hard to do. I recommend two max, okay? Use your foot, Ross. Hello, Ross. Available on YouTube or wherever you listen.